Hey everybody, I'm going to show you a cool new feature in AutoProbe. Hope you like it. It's a way to generate light probes on geometry with a height restriction. So basically, if you have objects that are running around in your world and you want them to get nice looking indirect lights, you can do that really quick and really easy with AutoProbe by saying, Here's the meshes that are my ground planes, and here's how high my characters can be. And if that situation applies to you, this is a great way to work. So let me show you how to do it. Real easy. You make an empty object, you add the auto probe script, and then you come in here. And there's this one little manual step. You have to set the box that encloses your whole scene. Super easy. So anything that's outside of that box will get thrown away. That's, that's what it's there for. It's to make sure that you can control the area that all your probes are going to be created in. Um, in this particular case, this workflow, you're generating everything on meshes. And anything that isn't a point within some pretty close distance of that mesh will also get thrown away. Um, it's a little bit uh, like the generation part versus creating additional probes is a two-step process. So um, technically, you could generate without putting that box there, but yeah, you, you probably want to make the box the right size. It just makes life easier. So. Uh, so in here, basically, we have the grid method or the spray method. Uh, you say how many points you want to sample, how long they're going to go between samples, and then when you hit a piece of geometry, how close can they be? Um, your height is how high your characters can get away from the ground plane. Um, let's, let's say that five meters is good. Um, now we want to drag in which meshes are the ground plane. So let's lock the inspector. It's the same as this lock button up here, but it's just different. And let's drag in the ground plane here. And I'm going to actually grab in the parent of the terrain. You can do that if you've organized your scene nicely and you have a single parent that's the parent of all the ground. And then you don't have to go and fiddle with constantly changing what's in here. Um, but you can grab in the terrain object or the terrain's parent, whichever, doesn't matter. Um, and so here we are, we've got some idea of what we're gonna wanna generate light probes for. And uh, what, I'm gonna show you what the light environment is. We've got a uh, just a directional light that's runtime only. We have a baked area light, which you can only bake area lights. They don't cast shadows, but they do make for nice pretty lights. Um, and then spotlight, which is mixed mode. And the mixed mode means it'll cast shadows because it's doing runtime lighting for direct lights. But the baked light is all the indirect lighting that was caused by the static light maps. And um, what AutoProbe does is it generates the lights, light probes that allows dynamic objects to also get there. So here we go. Um, on a terrain piece, you end up with, um, I'll generate 10,000 points that are right close to the terrain, and then 10,000 points that are uh, at this height that you've specified. So five meters above, it's going to generate an another 10,000. And then on these meshes, because they're not terrain, um, I'm just going to sample right at every vertex and then five meters directly above each one of them. All right, so let's do that real quick. So we'll generate probes. And you see it immediately starts with like 20,000 some odd probes. That's the terrain plus these two guys. And then it's spray foaming all the spaces in between to try and find any more cracks and crevices that it ought to be putting probes in. And you can see it's adding more, but um, just due to the, the height above and then the, the ray length, there's not a whole lot of places to put them. There's some probably in between, but not a whole. So it should pretty quickly generate all these points, and then we can take a look at them. All right, there we go. So now AutoProbe has created a 
pretty decent set. You can see here at the edges of uh, these planes, they they certainly did generate points right there on the corners of the triangle, and then a little higher. And there's a few of them in between, but not a whole lot. Go back to the easier to look at shading, and then take a look at the edges of the terrain. Unity doesn't like it when you have this many points, especially with lines. Yeah, you can see that there's this nice sandwich of points, right? All right, so that's great. But the problem is there's too many points. It's a lot of useless information. And what we, we really want to do is on super low resolution, we want to bake our light. <clears throat> so. I have default very low resolution. Everything's set up for that guy. Um, let's look real quick at system. So basically, we have these are all set to static. The terrain is normally set to static anyway. But these two guys are set to static so that they'll generate light map. And once we do that, the area lights will do what they're supposed to do. So let's go ahead and bake real quick. Um, because I've already baked the lighting previously before I built the light probes, it doesn't have to do nearly as much work. I mean, the lighting itself hasn't changed. So there's, it's, it's a pretty rapid turnaround. Unity caches most of that information, it skips past what it doesn't need. So once we bake the light probe, it'll have data inside the light probes themselves, and we can optimize the ones. Right, so we have light probe data. Now, let's optimize it so we don't have so much junk. There we go. So we started off with 24,000 probes. It's running through deleting probes by the thousand. You don't need them. Before I had this feature, if you wanted to do an outdoor scene, you'd have a hard time with it because even if you did make pretty tight tolerances and, and size that outer cube kind of tight around the terrain, you'd end up with so many unnecessary points and it would just run slower. Um, so having a height limit on meshes is really convenient, especially for, for exterior scenes with a lot of height variation. I think it's still pretty useful indoors if you've broken your floors up from your walls and ceiling. Uh, at the very least, it's a good starting point. So, you know, it's possible that starting from a single point it, using spray foam or grid method, it may not find every nook and cranny. But if you have vertices there, this will start with points in all those places and you can still spray foam each of those locations. That, That'll give you a really good coverage as an initialization. Okay. Also, if you were if you're a user of the previous version of Auto Pro, um, I found a way to work around the bug in Unity where it doesn't update the, uh, the tetrahedron lines. Kind of a mess. So here we go. Look how many points it took out. It only needs the points that it needs, and it gets rid of everything it doesn't. Over here in the area light, um, there's a inverse squared fall off, and the way that tetrahedrons work for light probes is linear. So there's generally going to be a lot more points in places where you do full baked lighting, and it's fairly intense. That's exactly what you expect to see. But over here, where it's kind of dim and the lights are a lot more linear, fall off is kind of close to black. It's it's not having to keep nearly, which again is exactly what you expect to see. 
but the amount of effort involved in this is pretty small. You click a few buttons, it does the right thing. All right. Thanks, guys. Hope you like it.